17 marketing and sales strategies. Okay, let's look at them then. So, you need to identify your market, sort out your niche, target them and find out also who your competitors are. So, is your niche is it a tangible are you offering a tangible solution to what your market is after? Of course, who wants what you're after? And what gaps are you missing? Where do they fall down your competitors? Find out what it is that they're going to be into. So what's your USP? What's your unique selling point? What is it that you can offer that the competitors can't? And secondly, of course, is it clear? Is it obvious? Is it in the face? Does it let them know what's happening? Okay, referrals. A lot of people seem to think that if they sit back and wait, referrals will just come to them. And it's not the way it works. When you've finished with a client um, and they're saying, fantastic, brilliant, you've, I'm really happy with the work you've done. Thank you for that. Do you know of anyone else that can use my service, my product? And if they say, hmm, say, well, if you've got any information for me, if you've got any phone numbers, any, any email addresses then, and I'll drop them a line and see if I can be of any help to them. So that's what I'm saying. Don't wait for referrals. Make a point of asking for them when somebody is happy with what you've done. And of course, sell without salespeople. That's easy. You just let your marketing do the talking. That's what you set it up for. OK, you have a website. Um, you need to make sure that that website is working for you. So your website needs to give an easy sales process. You need to dominate Google and you need to convert. So you need good copy. A good trick is to get um, a slightly um, being nice older person to sit down and look at your look at your website. Get them to figure out how they can contact you if that's the option or if they're supposed to buy how they go about buying or can they work their way around the website if they can do it. It must be quite good. So give it a try. Uh, another option being delegate and outsourcing. So you set your business up because you were good at whatever it is you do. You weren't an expert at everything though, were you? So rather than waste time doing those little fiddly farting jobs that don't get you anywhere, get somebody else to do them. Outsource. Social media. OK, so what do we mean? Social media is blogging, Twitter, Facebook, Dig, Stumbled, podcasting, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, Foursquare, you name it. Everybody seems to be doing it these days. Concentrate on what works for you. Sit down and write yourself um, a little plan of what it is you're going to do, what the aim of it is. So whether you're there to merely reputation control and do customer service or if you're there to provide information. But don't forget that all of these, it's about a conversation that you're having. You're not just throwing information in someone's face. You want to start a conversation. Starting that conversation means that you've got them interested. So just bear this in mind. Free publicity. A lot of people say that any publicity, bad, bad, good, whatever is good. But it's better to have it good, better to have it positive. So, of course, PR works. Just make sure that what you're sending out to people is newsworthy, not, oh, it was my first birthday and we had a birthday cake or um, today I managed to take in one order. Stick Yay, got my first order. It was a big one. It was to these people. We provided this benefit to them. Stick a little. Um, one of the things that we tend to do here at Biz in a Box is we have a social calendar up on the wall and listed on there is all the major events that go on in the year, whether it's a sporting event, whether it's your annual things, you know, your last night at the proms, your remembrance parade, anything that's coming up. Make a list of them and then see how you can possibly work around a story. The Jubilee, um, were you doing special offers on mugs? Did you come up with a brilliant idea? Just just try and see what you can work around it. OK, traffic to website. Why should people come and why should they stay? 
you have a certain amount of time for people arriving at your website before they move on to the next one. Give them a reason to stay, whether it's interesting, so they keep on reading, or whether it's a fantastic offer, so they want to buy, or whether it's a freebie that you're giving away because you're collecting email addresses because you want to market to them. Give them a reason to stay on your site. Uh, don't forget to drive traffic to your website. We have the Google's AdWords. You've got your social media that can drive traffic. SEO, search engine optimization or search engine marketing, depending on who you chat to. Um, this is the, the an, another way of making sure that you're getting um, information out there. You've got forums and you've also got press releases. Make sure you're putting your website out there for people to find. So to dominate Google, now this alone could take hours and hours of information, but basically you want to sort out some keywords, some meta tags, some alt tags, some content, some links, and all of this is called SEO, on-site and off-site. Um, if you're not sure what search engine, op search engine optimization is, head to Google, find out, have a look. So telemarketing boo hiss I hear everyone say but if it's done correctly it is one of the best means to market okay so the figure there mentioned three to four percent interest for direct mail but stick the direct mail out then stick telemarketing on top of it and that increases by 25 to 30 percent just look at the difference there so when you say telemarketing, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to employ someone to do it. If you are if you want to do it to add that little personal touch, do it. You don't have to employ someone if you're comfortable and want to do it and you're good at it. Don't waste time and money at something you're not good at. But if you're good at it, you'll suddenly start seeing those letters and the uh, uptake coming on. Email marketing. Um, this has gone out of phase briefly, but seems to be coming back in now. People now seem to be using it more. It is one of the cheapest and easiest means to market. You need a great headline. You need to personalize the email and you need to make sure you send it at a time when it will be read. So depending on what your product is or what your service is, you need to consider if you're sending it to businesses. Obviously, it needs to be between the hours of nine and five. If you're sending it to um, housewives because it's a product you want to get out there, think about when they're going to be sat at their computer. You want to try and get it so that as many people see it and read it rather than leave it stuck in their inbox for hours and hours or even days and don't get back to it. Alliances, um, kind of obvious really. Go with other people who can provide... Um, some means of working with each other so your products can go together. So if you're selling wedding cakes, obviously partner with somebody else in the wedding business because you're going to refer people to each other, etc. Testimonials. You are now by law not allowed to lie about them and make them up. So don't even think about it. But do ask um, and I apologise for the spelling mistake on this <laughs> this slide. I think I must have been uh, rushing around there and it's not really a Freudian slip. But yes, testimonials. So, end of the presentation I've got to talk to you about today. You have a three-step contact. You want to retain people, so you need to provide them with a reason to buy keep them informed and then look after them. So that's interest, build, nurture. The best customers you can have are those that come back time after time after time. Thanks for that then.